Ivy Myers, Northtown Neighbor News Magazine, a presentation of Sunny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at ntnm.org. Click on the pictures, it'll link you to the videos. You can go to YouTube from there. Um, close to a quarter million watched. Um, thank you so much for your participation. We're real big on community policing, caps24.org. Uh, I'd like to thank Lily Kim for introducing me to my next guest. Um, Lily's always terrific to deal with. I've been dealing with her for a number of years, even though we've actually only seen each other once. <laughs> but um, always, we are always in touch, and I know she's enjoying Mardi Gras right now. Right, right. <laughs> So uh, Facebook is wonderful for being able to see things. She's, she, she says she's the only Asian at Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd like to introduce you to somebody who's very involved in education and coaching and mentoring and all kinds of good stuff. Um, Eric Morris, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Morris? Good to have Real you. Real good. And Avi, please. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, thanks for having me, man. It's a blessing. Sure. Thank you. So why don't you tell us about yourself? Um, well, it's a long story, short story. I'll give you the, uh, the PG version. Okay. Uh, parents... Uh, you know, from a divorced family, got myself into a little bit of trouble going through high school and got kicked out of college and uh, turned my life around right around 92, 93. And I uh, always had this dream of going to the NBA and all this other stuff, focused more on basketball in school, then school. And I turned my life around and became uh, an educator. I uh, got into some trouble uh, around 90, 92 that was going to cost me, uh, basically me throwing my life away. And uh, I was able to uh, get myself together yeah. and go through the expungement process. And uh, my life was changed from then on and became an educator. And I have been educating students for probably almost close to 10 years. Now I'm a dean of students at one of the top charter schools on the west side That's of Chicago. Cool. <laughs> so uh, the very thing that I used to cause trouble in school, <laughs> now I'm actually helping kids how to get it through. And now I speak all over the country and I've done a lot of things with different celebrities that have foundations to uh, uh, different gangs and uh, things in the Chicagoland area and you know across the country so yeah one of the cool things that people don't realize because you used to be the perpetrator yourself right <laughs> you've got a better handle on what these kids are up to yeah I was uh, <laughs> I was one of those guys you didn't want in your classroom uh, I did I went to um, and you guys can go check it out I went to uh, Eisenhower High School over in the Blue Island area yeah uh, and it, 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 I didn't really uh, wasn't focused on academics I was more trying to focus on myself, and uh, it, it almost cost me, but I'm glad I was given a second chance. That's very cool. And uh, What's the name of the school you're at? Now? The school I'm at is Learn Charter. We have about six schools in our network. Uh, it's a blessing that uh, the school I'm at was uh, featured on Oprah uh, cool. when she did the whole thing about the uh, Waiting for, uh, for Superman film that came out, and she took some of the top charter schools and seen which ones were making a difference in those areas, and we were one uh, that was making a difference. So uh, I'm, I have the honor to be, have been there for three years, and with my speaking and everything going on, I've been able to touch those kids in the north in a positive way in the North Lawndale area, which we know has a uh, high crime rate as we speak. But um, those kids are learning. Their test scores are well. And uh, it's funny because we have, um, it's funny we have kids that our parents might be involved in some things, and we also have police officer parents and federal agents' parents. And wow. That stuff, that all come and uh, help us out at the school, and these kids are all learning. So I have a, ri a wide range of kids at that school. That sounds like a real wide range. Yeah, yeah I, um, I'm not, you know what, uh, it's kind of funny, I just thought back to uh, when my car broke down right around Roosevelt Road in Sacramento, <laughs> yeah, which isn't far from you right, at right, all. Right on the other side of Douglas Park. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically the guy that, that uh, and, and I, by the way, I was, I was delivering a book to somebody, and right. I got $8,000 worth of books in my trunk. Wow. And... Uh, you know, the, the guy that offered to help me, who was very nice and very helpful, um, he just had to make one stop first. Right. And that was to get his wife some crack. <laughs> well, oh, well. I, I did have the windows open for the ride up north. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, it, you know what, that area is changing because there are a couple of schools that are um, um, kind of changing around. They're, they're doing a lot of things in that area because they want change in that area. We know... Um, that the crime uh, has been crazy in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, North Lawndale at one point and the Grand Crossing area were two of the biggest places where the most shootings were yeah, going. Yeah, Grand Crossing yeah. is really bad news. Right. Not it, to mention the, the, my old neighborhood, South Shore. South Shore, which I was... And if you're from Blue Island, yeah. you're familiar with the area. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I started in South Chicago and we moved when I was five from there. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's been pretty tough. We uh, A friend of mine, uh, Harold Looney Ward, we did a mentoring program at South Shore High School really to get those kids involved and get some parent involvement. Because we talk about change, but we, we're really not stepping out making change. I'm talking about that community. 
even in the North Lawndale area, I see a lot of pastors and, and clergymen are trying to really get a hold of that area uh, because there have been a lot of uh, killings and, and, and different things that's been going on. And so I have been a beacon of light, which is a, a blessing to be able to be there and, and help some of those kids and uh, actually being a teacher for five years and know what it feels like to lose a student uh, to wow. crime. So uh, Never thought yeah, that, that. that's something I tell people all the time. One of the worst things I've experienced in my life is to see a parent come into a uh, school to clean her son's locker out after he's been shot. Wow. So uh, those are some, uh, I've had some tough times, especially when I was a high school uh, PE teacher, so. That is a tough time. And yeah, it's sort of like right now, of course, the whole Chicago area is focused on, uh, on Hadaya, the, yes. the little girl who, uh, the 15 year old who, who got killed from random violence. It's really a shame. Yeah, we, um, it was, it's, it's ironic you said it because we were at, uh, I was at a, a radio station here in Chicago at a town hall meeting and her dad called in and um, right after he called in they had just caught the two guys uh, now I've heard they've been whatever the police is doing what they're doing yeah and just sitting there with that with that panel of uh, clergymen uh, people from different organizations different fraternities and hearing him he was actually calling from Washington this was before the State of the Union so uh, I wouldn't know being a father and a, a husband and a parent what that parent is going through, or any parent of uh, the other 500 some kids that uh, have been killed. Our youth are crying out, and I don't think people really understand that. And that's youth across the board, not just African American youth, but youth across the board are crying out. And I think we really need to bridge that gap. Uh, and I've been hearing that. Uh, I've spoken in African American schools, I've spoken in di diverse schools, and kids are having issues. You have, if it's not the gang violence, it's the bullying. If it's not the, the, the bullying that's trying to fit in, it's the, it's the cyber bullying, the, the whole thing about it, saying stuff on Facebook, people getting picked on. So uh, that, uh, we need to really just tap into our uh, wraparound services, which are our social emotional services, uh, just getting kids help and really just listening to them. I don't, you know, I taught for five years. I, and I'll be honest, I don't, a lot of teachers are not listening. They're, they're so caught up on, I got to get these test scores and that, you know, this kid here needs help. That's a big problem with the test scores. You yeah. know, I, I'll tell you this much, I did great on test scores and my grades <laughs> stunk. Right, right. You know, and, and, and that's the thing that I see in our in our Chicago public schools, and I've spoken in a lot of them, and, and all the kids that come up to me is like, why can't we have teachers like you that care and that know what we like? Um, and when I talk to different parents, I tell them, I say, you got to know what your kids are doing. Turn on MTV, BET, listen to some of the music, get in and get out. Find out what's going on. Find out what your kids are doing on Facebook. So this is... Uh, this is a, uh, it's almost like an uphill battle, but when people really start seeing, look, this stuff has to stop, especially amongst our African-American community, we have to start saying, no, we have to get it together, and it starts with us. We want to get all this help from everybody else, but a lot of, you know, if you're harboring people in your house, and we have this, uh, we talk about the police having this code of silence, but we have one in our community, too. So how can we, you know, we have to learn how to speak out against foolishness. You know, and, and that's why I'm at, and that's what I do. And that when I go out and speak, I tell people, I said, I had to change my life. I had 100 million mentors. I just didn't listen to them. Wow. <laughs> you know, so it took me to change my life. My mom was a, was a missionary, traveled to India, Pakistan. My stepdad was a missionary from West Africa. I didn't listen to them. I had to really get my, it took me getting in trouble, but I had to turn around and say, you know what? What am I going to do with my life? And so that's when I decided to say, you know what? I need to get cultured. I need to wake up. I need to stop making excuses, and you know what? Get out here and do what I need to do. Very cool. Um, so, Eric Morris, motivational speaker, school administrator, teacher. <laughs> um, hey, and you really, uh, you really brought yourself back from the uh, brink, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was tough. I, um, my case was expunged. It was, it was just a blessing. I don't. People always say you say that. I say, yeah, I don't mind, because there's someone out there that's trying to get help. I just, what I did was, after I got a slap on the wrist, I didn't go back. Yeah. I had no excuses. I said I would never, you know, be that type of fool again. I'm a little silly and funny with the kids at the school, but it it wasn't worth it. And I, I just, I'm just blessed that I got a second chance. I mean, I'm really Very not cool. supposed to be sitting here with you. Um, well, I'm glad you are. Would you <laughs> like to give people a contact uh, yeah. information? Yeah. Um, it's uh, Eric Morris. If you want to hit me up on Facebook, my website is egminc.info. And you can follow me on Twitter, the mentor, EGM. Eric Morris, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. My pleasure. You. Thank you.